The Great White Hope is about uh, Jack Johnson. And it was actually a stage play that was made a few years before. And the stage play itself, I think it won Best Stage Play. And like James, here's the weird thing too. James Earl Jones, this is one of the, this is like his first, you know, he was in Dr. Strange Love and he was in a couple, you know, he had small parts in other movies. But this was his first prominent role. And it's also Gene Alexander's first prominent role. And you know Jane, Jane Alexander from, uh, she was in All the President's Men. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Jane Alexander, and, and they, were, they were both in the stage play of The Great White Hope. So it was kind of nice to have them both on screen. And she played uh, a composite of kind of two different women in Jack Johnson's life, who was Etta, Etta, uh, Etta Durier and Belle Schreiber. So she was kind of composite of both of those characters. But anyway, it starts, the, the film starts pretty much in 1910. And it doesn't tell you, I don't think it tells you that, but it starts there when he's fighting, um, now his name is Jack Jefferson in this film. Yeah. It's not Jack Johnson. They use different names for everybody. But I they're confused, all based. I got confused for a little bit there. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> you know, it's... They're based off of real characters though. So, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. The, the, the reason, what, the, the problem I had with this is I wish it started a little bit before that because Jack Johnson's story, there, there's a great Ken Burns documentary, Unforgivable Blackness, about Jack Johnson. And the fight that you see at the beginning of the movie was kind of the midpoint of that documentary. There was so much that happened before that with Jack Johnson. Um, and it kind of culminated with this fight. This fight was called the fight of the century, as many fights ended up becoming, you know, called the fight of the century. Um, Joe Lewis versus Max Schmeling called the fight of the century. Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, the fight of the century. You know, there's always these things. This was like the first fight of the century because Jack Johnson won the heavyweight championship, but the guy who was champion, two champions before him, uh, his name was... Uh, in the movie, I forgot exactly the name of it. I think it was Brady or someone. They, they called him in the movie or something like that. But his real name was Jim Jeffries. And he was undefeated, retired undefeated. And he'd been retired for like five years. And Jack Johnson was just rolling through all these guys. He beat Tommy Burns. He beat, you know, of everyone who was white, whatever, black. And so the reason why it's called the Great White Hope is because they were trying to get fighters back then to take the title back from Jack Johnson, not just to take the title away from a black guy, but the, to, for the white race. We want to show that we're superior. So there was still the attitude back then. This is post-1900, you know? So not just in the South, but in the North as well. So Jack Johnson was a very flamboyant character. He, like I said, he dated white women. That was, look, that would, people would kill you for that back then, you know? And he drove fast cars. He lived in, in, a, in a rich manner. And he, he resided, he had a place in the south side of Chicago, not very far from uh, where Guarantee Rate Field is now. Oh. That whole area, like a Martin Luther King, I mean, he, that was kind of his area. Oh, Coincidentally, oh. he's buried at Graceland Cemetery, which is just north of Wrigley Field, though. Oddly <laughs> enough. But that big cemetery is north of Wrigley Field. Jack Johnson's actually buried there. Have you ever been out there? I haven't seen his. I've been. I haven't been in the cemetery. I do need to do, to go. I would should, love to go uh, see that. Sounds like that would be a fun. Uh, not fun, but it would be definitely something worth checking out. So yeah, I've uh, been to a couple of cemeteries. It's really weird, but like I saw Jesse Owens' is you know grave in Oakwood Cemetery in Chicago, and visit different places like that. I've been it's to, kind of a morbid uh, I've thing been to, to James, do, but... James Dean's grave. It's just crazy. Oh, yeah, it's crazy to. I mean, it's just a small little thing. And imagine it's just a small little town. And these are the stories, man. I mean, these are the stories that are, I mean, the story, even you just telling it again here, it's, it puts me, it puts me in a, it, it makes me, you know, really makes you think. And this movie does definitely do that. It does do it. And it does a good job of, of creating the tension, the racial tension and stuff, but it doesn't hold true to exactly kind of what happened. The fight of the century I was talking about against Jim Jeffries that took place in Reno, Nevada in 1910. And they had Jim Jeffries come out of retirement to take the belt back because to, to, to white people, he was like their God. He was the guy. He was unbeatable. There's no way Jack Johnson could, you know, defeat this guy. Jack Johnson whipped his ass. <laughs> and they, and this is the second time it's happened. They actually stopped the reel of the fight 
before it was over because at that time they did not want to show a black man beating a white man in the ring on a reel. So at the Tommy Burns fight, we won the championship. The Austin police came in and stopped the fight as well before it was all over because they didn't want that shown. You know, the, the people obviously saw it live. It was on tape, but they killed the tape because they didn't want that shown all over the country in movie houses and things like that to where they show a black guy beating a white man. That's how it was. After he beat Jim Jeffries in 1910, there were racial riots and people were killed because of such a thing. So this he lived knowing that at any point, you know, at a fight, you never know. A white guy could have come and shot him, stabbed him, done whatever. But he lived to how you want to live. And it, the movie is good at showing that uh, type of animosity towards him, though. Even his own people thinking he's living, you know, the rich life. He's living the white man's life. He's not helping the black man. We, um, you just think he, of, I mean, you think of everyone. I mean, what do, you, what, what do you think everyone thinks of when they think of James Earl Jones? I think of Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. I even think so. I even think I like Conan with the long hair, you know, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, or I, I think of uh, his character, uh, Admiral Greer, in uh, the Jack Ryan movies, Hunt for yeah. or Patriot Games, yes. Danger. You think of that. This was his first big role. And uh, um, yeah, it was, it was a different role for him. But he did it very well. And Jane Alexander was great and she was phenomenal. Um, Red Fox actually was uh, going to be involved in the film as well, but he was actually friends because he was actually friends with Jack Johnson before Jack oh. Johnson died in the early 40s. But he thought the film itself wasn't, it didn't do him justice. So he didn't want to be a part of it. Muhammad Ali actually did a little bit of, because he'd be on the set every now and then. Like he wasn't part of the credits or he wasn't involved in the movie, but he was on the set. He would help with like the boxing choreography to make it a little more true to life. But Jack Johnson was a huge, huge, larger-than-life figure. And he was one of the best fighters of all time you've never heard of because he was a very defensive fighter. His fights were kind of boring sometimes because he was all about defense, but he was very powerful. He held the title for a, a long time, and then he actually had to leave the country because they were going to arrest him in the Man Act, the same thing they, were, they, they, they clipped Charlie Chaplin on which was taking a woman across state lines for what they call immoral purposes, sort of like prostitution or anything like that. But it's, t it's a total bullshit thing that kind of is made up to get guys. Just to but get it was always directed towards minorities. So he actually snuck out dressing up as a, uh, I think it was a Canadian minor league baseball team. And you see it in the movie, like they came into a hotel and he changed out of his, his clothing Changed into one of their uniforms. He got on the team bus, and got out of there, and ended up going to like Europe, travel over the world, and fought all over the country. And never, but then when he finally lost the title, he lost in Havana, Cuba to Jess Willard. And Jess Willard was another one of the great white hopes they're trying to groom. Wasn't a great fighter. Um, once he won the title, he got his ass beaten to death by Jack Dempsey. But um, he was ambling, or not the ambling, ambling out Prima Carnera. But um, he was kind of, uh, he was a, he was like six foot seven or something a huge guy but he fought jack johnson in havana cuba in like 100 and some odd degree weather and it's speculated that jack johnson ended up throwing the fight because the united states kind of worked out a deal with him where if you hey if you take if you lose a title you can come back you'll have a reduced sentence so like you see in the real fight like at the end of it like when he's knocked down in the 27th round mind you because back then they just fought on, you know, pretty you much. Until they fought. <laughs> um, you see him like shield his head, face like this. Like he just holds his arms over, like he shields himself from the sun. And when you're knocked out or you're, not, or you're down, you're not doing that. Like fighters don't do that. So they speculated that he threw that. Now they say, well, if he threw it, why do you wait 26 rounds to throw it? But they never really knew the truth. Um, he didn't really train for that fight. I don't think he really cared much anymore. He just wanted to kind of get back to the United States. And he fought he fought a little bit after that and wasn't, you know, out, he was kind of out of shape, wasn't very good. But, like, in his prime, he was, you know, one of the top five, maybe even top three boxers of all time, in my opinion. Um, this movie, like I said, it was it was adapted from a stage play. And they really, adapted. I don't know if you have. If you ever get a chance, really awesome, a Miles Davis album called Jack Johnson. From the uh, early '70s, really, it's good smooth jazz, good to relax to. But it's pretty much um, the music version he put together for 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 Jack Johnson. Um, 
which to me for a long time I often got confused with the uh, acoustic um the guy who sings you know all the acoustic songs jack johnson and all all the oh yeah he gets yeah if you, you know so for, for i was talking about back about in song. high back in like you know 2003 people be like you hear jack johnson i'd be like the boxer they're like no the musician you know that guy don't know who the boxer is the <laughs> boxer. that's the thing like it's that that's why that this movie i, I wanted to choose this movie because yeah. it was a significant character a significant you know in the 20th century character that you'd never really heard of because it was so far back then and like the way the the fights were covered and the the lack of film on the fights that's available you don't yeah, you don't really get to see much awesome but, actor that people don't talk a lot about that's in this movie and he's also in rollerball is uh, moses gun i'm a big fan of of him do you know who i'm talking about he's, yeah he's a good he's in shaft and a couple other things um one day I'll have to show you. He's in a really awesome Tales from the Crypt episode um, from like 1989. But um, oh yeah, he was dead. He was still alive by then. I forgot. Yeah, I mean like that. That I love. I love when you get actors like that. You know, even like Hal Holbrook. I talked about him a couple days ago on Twitter. He shows up in this movie. Um, Hal Holbrook has been in every lot ever. It seems like I just saw him in. Um, I was watching the old, uh, not the Ocean City old. It was made in the mid '80s, uh, North and South miniseries <laughs> yeah, with Patrick Swayze and James Ray. Yeah, he, he played a <laughs> uh, Lincoln in that. And I was like, oh yeah, that's right. 